Hey everybody, welcome back to the podcast. Danny here today. I'm talking to you about Mieru Hito. So Mieru Hito is written and drawn by Toshiaki Iwashiro. Now this is the person that did Siren, as well as another manga we talked about a long time ago, Kagami Gami. And this series came out in 2005, ended in 2006. So this is the series before Siren itself. And we'll talk more about that later. And of course, this was published in Weekly Shonen Jump. And as I read the final chapter, which was 57, discovered that, yeah, this series got canceled. And again, you know, it's just one of those things that sucks to hear about a series. This one had potential. And that always sucks to hear, man. So let's go ahead and dive in. This stars our two main characters, Himeno and Myojin. Himeno is a freshman just starting out in high school. And she's moving into the big city by herself. And along the way, she encounters this older gentleman named Myojin, who we later find out is a spirit guide as he goes around and helps spirits whenever they get out of hand, like the one that's haunting Himeno, uh, he sends them back to the other world. And so she's had this spirit haunting her since she was a child, and now it's here to collect its debt. And we see him coming in and using his own soul as a source of power to fight back against these types of spirits. Helps her out. And after some confusion and humor going along the line, they go their separate ways. And Himeno coming into the big city, she went to go find the cheapest place to live. And it turns out it's this run-down apartment complex that, of course, Myojin runs. And this isn't your ordinary apartment complex. It is a place where the living and the dead stay. Himeno, being the first living tenant there, is now living with a bunch of ghosts that get sprinkled into the story as we progress further and further. So the main premise really is Myojin gets some tips about some spirits that are getting out of hand from a retired detective. And he goes and deals with them. And either one of the ghosts that lives at the apartment complex, as well as Himeno, tag along, and we just go on with their ventures. And like I said, it had potential. I thought that for sure we were going more of a slice of life type of route because of just how it was for the first half, right? We're just going through these random situations, some of them not too crazy, some of them, of course, with some action. And I thought that's just what we were going to be dealing with. And then, of course understanding more about Himeno as a character, how she gets more comfortable living with Ghost and uh, Myojin. Because as they try to pry a little bit into her past, she gets very sheltered and tries to deflect and talk about something else. So clearly there was something there that they wanted to build up. And in a standard way, after we go through the main cast, get to understand the characters just a little bit more, including the new ones that just showed up, Now we're hitting the big story arcs, character development, motivations, and fantastic action sequences. It really is unfortunate that Iroshiro's work gets canceled a lot because, goddamn, he has some of the most intense battle scenes in a weekly series. It's always engaging. You have a clear understanding of what's going on. You feel the intensity And of course, his artwork is so good. You really don't get lost when it comes to the fights. And of course, another positive thing when it comes to Iroshiro as well as in this series is the writing is always consistent, right? It's hitting the beats that you're expecting to hit during the low times, during the intense moments. The the lore is just enough to keep you interested in these chapters uh, in between the fights. For a long time when I was reading, I was thinking... Was this canceled? Because when Siren ended, I thought it just ended. But then after rereading years later, finding out it did get canceled, it's like, wow, it kind of really didn't feel like it got canceled. And a lot of that has to do with his writing as a whole is that he can keep it consistent so that way it doesn't feel rushed or it doesn't really feel like, damn, this really got canceled. Overall, I really was enjoying the series. It did go a little slow at first, but that was just because of the buildup and then We started getting into these arcs and I thought, okay, now we're really picking up the pace. I'm excited to see where this goes. And then boom, here comes the four heavenly kings type of characters 
coming in and saying, hey, we're grabbing Jimeno and we're pushing you guys forward to a final fight in this series. It doesn't really feel like it gets canceled until the final few chapters to where I was reading the last chapter and it's like standard pages about 22 and I'm thinking, okay, how are we about to resolve what's going on? And then unfortunately we end with a cliffhanger. There was stuff in the final chapter that hinted of, oh, this is sort of what's going to happen, what to expect. That was unfortunate because there could have been a lot of buildup to that, but there just wasn't enough time. And then luckily he was able to do a special one shot for the series. It was a few months after the ending and we just got to see stuff that he missed that really weren't super important to the story. Because the other characters are ghosts. You have to think, well, if they're ghosts, that means they died. How did they die? And we got one with a little girl named Azumi because I think that's the biggest one to talk about, right? It's like she's so young. How did she die? And she was involved with the story because the situation with her mom is there to explain more about the world and the types of spirits and how resentment affects their soul and can corrupt them and change them into these other classifications that become a threat. So that's why we got her story in there. And when the other ones came in, like Gaku, for example, we just got an understanding of his character. Same thing with his younger brother, uh, Suki Take. It wasn't super important to know why or how they died. Luckily, with this one shot, it says, okay, here's the answer. Now, was that going to be in the story regardless if it didn't get canceled? I don't know. Because how would you fit it after the setup section of the series, right? Because moving forward, we're actually getting into real arcs and stories. Unless they come across characters that are connected to their deaths, then we can introduce that. I can understand that part. Or when they uh, pass on as well. There is a moment with Gaku, who is the other character who's here to fight, really. That's only just him and Myojin, pretty much. Until other characters show up. But uh, he did something, and there was some foreshadowing that he might not make it and happy to say that's not where we went it actually went somewhere else that was more interesting and that's what i like here that iroshiro did is that yeah we'll hit those notes that are very cliche and what you would expect for certain things like there's a little tournament section and after seeing the lineup you would assume oh okay so this guy's going last because he's so important they go second you're like wait a minute what And then they unravel the real plan that they had behind the scenes that we didn't get to read yet. It's like, oh, wow, that's clever. And we also still get to see the third match happen, even though the tournament stuff subsided as the plot took a turn. And so let's talk about Siren real quick, because, again, that is the main series that happened after this one lasted a lot longer. And as I was reading Mieru Hito, a lot of things clicked in my head where, hey... A lot of this stuff gets carried over to Siren. Okay. It really feels like this series was sort of the testing grounds for things he wanted to do. And we see going into Siren that he polished a lot of what he was trying to do here. And there's also a lot of things that you can tell he likes when it comes to character designs and just the way attacks are. Because there was a certain point where I was thinking, are we dealing with spirits or are these just straight up psychics? Because the main power set is using your soul energy, right, to keep it in a spiritual sense. But after a certain point, it looked like just the same psychic type of powers that you see in Siren. And maybe that's because this has to be a shonen series, so certain things have to look a certain way. But that's just the first thing that clicked in my mind because I read Siren first thinking, oh, a lot of it came from here. Nice. And yes, character designs, fantastic. Uh, Myojin, I really liked the way he looked, but I will say when things start getting heavier and heavier into the shonen aspect, he reverts to a shonen looking character. He wears these glasses early on that are from his previous master who passed away during an incident, and he was trying to carry his image as well as his personality and continue his work and also he's an older character so i feel like he should have kept those but as we got into the last few arcs he no longer wore them and his face itself looked younger and more shonen like and a part of me was okay with it because again it's a shonen series but i would have preferred if he just stayed with the same look sure maybe the glasses fall off during battle or something but the fact that he stopped wearing them and pushing forward to become stronger it just felt weird going into that 
Overall, I thought this was a fine time. It is unfortunate that it got canceled and even more unfortunate that Iwashiro couldn't finish the final arc like he wanted to because there just wasn't enough time. The real main antagonist at the end only showed up for two or three chapters and that was disappointing. I mean, the, his introduction was great. His motivations were very clear from the jump and there was stuff sprinkled about here and there leading up to his reveal because for a moment I was thinking, are we not going to see him because he's the biggest deal, right? But we're only seeing these other characters that work under him. I was like, okay, maybe we just won't see him until like a few arcs later down the line. And then when he showed up, it was great timing. But again, unfortunately, we couldn't get more into him. And like I said, in the last chapter, there is a section where we kind of get the idea of what the end goal was to deal with the conflict between Myojin and the main antagonist because the main antagonist's goal is to get revenge on humanity. And in the sequence, Myojin found a way to either stall him or try to convince him otherwise to not do that. And I thought that would have been interesting to see. So yeah, guys, I would still say check this one out, mainly because this is from Iroshiro. Of course, I'm a huge Siren fan, as you guys know. And this guy just does not miss when it comes to the writing. All the characters are great. They're well written and you can get a clear understanding of them pretty early on. And of course, the great action scenes that we can get later down the line once we start going more into the actual story of what's going on here. So all I really got to say today about this series, guys, have you read Mieruhito? Would love to hear your thoughts. You can send those to unfirstpodcast at gmail.com if you have any questions or comments. And you can follow us on social media anywhere you go at Unverse Podcast, and we'll let you know when those episodes drop. So thank you guys, and we'll catch you on the next one. Mm-hmm.